And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood. So it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby wrapped stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I, shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every dam wrapped out there. Right, what are you staring, wait, you ain't from around here, who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Outstanding! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? It is a shithole. It's a free shithole, though. Plenty of ways to blaze your own trail. Folks seem to like that. Besides, the booze is good. Something about that fish oil. Cheers. Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait. That ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Well, well. Isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drinks on me, stranger. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nioka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few and tell it them myself. Now what can I do for you? Thought it had a fancy ring to it. Name's the first advertising anyone sees, after all. Nope. But a man can dream. Not since Amber Heights. These days we have more leaving than coming. Off to join the Iconoclasts or some such. Anyone who spends any amount of time in this bar is bound to get to know Nioka. On account of her being here so often herself. And I don't mean that unkindly. Anyone who's rid us of as many beasts as you have is entitled to a few drinks. Something else I can do for you? capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own caffeinoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. What can Auntie Abigail do for you?
She works over at the fishery next door. Quite the hard worker, but she's got a bit of a temper. No disagreement there, dearie. <laughs> but Velma can be a little prickly. Oh, but here I go again, running my mouth when it's none of my business. Was there something else you needed? And what a helpful young lady you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? Now, now, there's no keeping secrets from Auntie Abigail. I'll tease it out of you one way or another. Also, I really do have to enter someone's name for the allotment. After all, I have to keep track of where our little pills wander off to. Indeed. Now, how about you tell Auntie who this pickup's for? Don't blame me if I puke on your shoes. Aren't you a saucy thing? Now, I may not be a fresh young thing anymore, but with age comes experience, dearie. Much as I'd love to, my rheumatism is especially fierce at the moment, and I'm all out of my medicine. But I'd hate to send you away empty-handed. You were here for Caffeinoid, weren't you? Who's it for? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid it'll be the better part of a month. Our dear Nioka tends to exhaust her supply rather quickly. Believe me, there's nothing I'd love better than to help you. <laughs> but there's not much I can do. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the Flower of Enlightenment. On the way, he tried some... rather daring substance combinations. It's a philosophist symbol of some kind, dearie. Never you mind. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you, dearie. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room, for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. Chin up, dearie.
<laughs> the charmer. Welcome back. Drink chatter business. All of the above? Says someone who's never had any fun. Exactly. See, I'm glad someone on your crew's got some sense of sensible got her head on straight. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the uh oh no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. That was fast. I gotta see about stalking some on the ship. You be careful. The first one's free. After that, they'll offer you gainful employment. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. That's a pretty big gun for a hunter. I don't know what the game's like on Terra 2, but out here, the daintier weapons ain't gonna cut it. Manasaurs require stopping power. Yeah, but what's left after you're done with them? What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here. Can we talk? Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Really? Here I was stealing myself for inevitable rejection. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. I saw it happen. Hell, one of them was in my arms at the time. His name was Hayes, and he's our first stop. I buried him away from our encampment. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to Barry. 
A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. Oh, yes. I can't wait. Good old Stellar Bay. Only place on the planet that don't stink of sulfur. Here we go. Down they go. Like true professionals. They're in my... Here we yeah. go. Okay, Captain. That was a nice warm up.
rest of them. That's how it's done, Captain. Nail the cat. Take him down. Solid kill. Watch it. These pools don't just stink. They'll take a toe off. Their mistake.
Fallbrook's on the other side of the bridge there if you need a drink. We're only halfway to the mountain, so might consider stopping in. Look northwest. That ain't it, but marauders sometimes camp inside the buildings there. Steer clear unless you fancy getting shot. Westbound still. I'll let you know when we can start ascending. Boy, take you. Keeping you! I call this Rotting River, on account of all the dead things I've thrown in it over the years. It'll take you into the Devil's Peak Caverns if you follow it under the bridge. That's one option. Others the slope up. If you're up for some fun, let's chat. What's up? Right. We can take the caverns up, but if you ain't into spelunking, there's a path a little ways north. I'd warn you, it'll be a tough trek. Big bad's up on that hill. 
I'm game to hunt them if you are, but it'd be safer to stick to the caverns. The caves back east are safest. We can head up this path if you want to shoot your way through a few nightmares on your way up. Let's show him. A good tussle. Unfiltered air, rocks in my shoes, risky choke points, all the things I hate about mountains. It is a trek, isn't it? Almost like we don't have working lifts or roads. Wraps. Let's clear the sulfur sodden fucks out so Hayes can rest in peace. Hayes was the best self-sacrificing son of a saint I ever met. Halcyon is worse off without him. Now, if we're gonna lure the Manta Queen out, we'll need to find Rebecca and Anders. They took a UDL contract on Terra too. We never heard from them again. Think it's time I call in a favor with Hiram. If anyone can track them down, it's him. The queen ain't just gonna come out on her own. She'll have dug tunnels into the mountain. I've got theories about how to lure her out, but Anders would know for sure. I don't know much about it. It paid well, so they took it. They said they'd be back in a couple of weeks and that maybe we could all use the money to get off Monarch. That was a long time ago. I should have. I... I really should have. But soon after they left, Hayes and the others died. And to be honest, after him, I... 
I stopped trying because it hurt like hell to do so. Thanks. I'm still not convinced I won't come to regret it, but we've started down this path. Might as well see it through. Maybe it'll stop me screaming at night. Now come on, let's make tracks before Hiram dies of old age. I love this mountain. You can see so much from here. So many beasts would need killing. So many drinks would need drinking. I've got to do more cardio. We're doing this! Nice work! Don't mess with us. And here we are. Told you we'd make it in one piece. Station ain't too far now. never sets foot outside. This station's under the protection of the corporate compliance crew. You a marauder? Cause me and my sunshine, that's my gun if you were wondering, we don't take kindly to marauders.
A coherent enough response, I reckon. Must be true. You're clear, but I would caution you against pressing on ahead. This station's plumb crawling with marauders, you know? I take it you ain't met the other C3s. Me and Sunshine are doing exactly what we've been tasked with. You want more details? You ought to talk to my crew. They're guarding a small barracks to the southeast, by the edge of the mountain. There is nothing I'd enjoy more, but the C3s play it by the book, usually. Go petition the boss man. Maybe you can convince him to alter my duties. See that path that runs underneath that giant archway? Follow it on down. There's a little station near the cliff. You'll find the rest of my crew there. Oh no. How the hell did marauders navigate the caverns? Please tell me. Solid kill! Get our hands dirty. Hiram must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easy. Yep. 
Here's the elevator. But it ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. Guess we keep moving forward. Look for another way up. You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, she hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. I see why Neoka tolerates you. Fine, I'll do the talking. By the hand of faith and my own cunning skill, I run this station. The Marauders may have other plans, and since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I have need of you. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the Broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that, aside from you. You're here. And you're armed, aren't you? The feed's gone grainy, but it looks like you're packing deadly force. I know Nioka is, for sure. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already, they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently. Aside from the bits I'll be paying you, I trade in secrets, valuable ones for my vocation. I'm sure you can come up with something you might like to ask me about in person once I'm safe.
That's the last of them, I think. Keep it down. Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. My compliments on your improvised utilization of the fire suppressant system. I would expect nothing less from one of Neoka's associates. As usual, I'll take that as a compliment. Of course. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Damn it, Hiram. I'm trying to embark on a journey of self-improvement and past reflection and all that blasted nonsense that'll help me sleep at night. Suppose I can't fault you for that. Ugh, yeesh. This is why I hold up in a tower far from society. Can't stand these emotional heebie-jeebies. Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra, too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, 
it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange, since you killed the Marauders for me. Ask me what you will. What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. Not much, admittedly. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that, well, that's a raptodon of another color. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? You mean between MSI the Iconoclast and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra-1 and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Precisely. Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle, that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally gray. Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat-drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, He's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. Indeed, the information I gather usually is, or it's not worth my time investment, as you can imagine. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me.
If you try to cite me on this, I would... Emmet? Luckily for you... How low you seemingly regard my trade. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Careful, I know that line. I use it all the time. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness. Which of course has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. Amber Heights is one of the only surviving settlements outside of Stellar Bay. Graham Bryant and the Iconoclast there got their hands on a working relay station. Now they're ceaselessly transmitting philosophist ramblings on my airwaves. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI's headquarters in the center of town. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off-world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. You do that, I'll be here, waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it, plus a vat of patience. Nioka, pick me up some stimu lotion and a bottle of purple berry wine when you're next in Stellar Bay. make such a big thing out of hiking. Once you're up, you just gotta go down again. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still standing. Every time I set foot inside, I half expect the tower to fall over. How'd you get up here? Through the caves? Good answer. I wasn't looking forward to gut-shotting you. 
See, the thing is, I'm with the corporate compliance crew. C3, if you will. We're mercs. And our current contract mandates that we annihilate any creatures or persons that emerge from the tunnel. Allow me to intervene. It's my job to mediate any conflicts of interest regarding C3 and third parties. All right. First things first. To make a decision in this dispute, I'm gonna need to know what your role in your organization is. A lean but efficient corporate structure. I'm impressed. Still, I gotta wonder. What are your intentions regarding Devil's Peak Station? That is why you've wandered out here, I presume? Our guidelines allow us some leeway in identifying threats to our client. Your unorthodox profession makes me think we ought to remove you from the premises permanently. However, the terms of our contract specifically targets marauders, iconoclasts, MSI operatives, and anyone deemed to hobo-like in appearance. As you don't appear to fit any of those categories, I'm afraid I can't quite make a call on you. Don't we, as a standing policy, provide an alternative to termination via financial restitution? Addy, our chief financial officer, could confirm. But I'm betting if you're willing to compensate us for our lost time and productivity due to this arbitration, you could pass. I guess we might could. There's something I like about you. Can't put my finger on it, but I feel like I'd rather have you with us than against us. All right. Lance, unless you have a final point of contention to make, I'd say she's clear to go. Nah, I'll sign the clearance form. Just, I must advise you to steer clear of Devil's Peak Station. It's teeming with marauders. Anything else you need? Trying to say we didn't do our job? I'll have you know, our contract was to stop any marauders coming from the caves. Didn't say nothing about the ones taking the mountain path. We'll simply clear them out later, once we've got the go-ahead from Berthold. That's right. Berthold Fox is our boss man, founder, president, and CEO. Bertie went down into the caves on a hunt for marauders, give or take, six hours ago. He's a hands-on type. Likes to handle the tougher tasks himself. Although, he should have been back. Going on six hours now. I'd ask you to check the caves for him, but then we'd have to kill you when you crawl back out. Space, no. The contract doesn't target C3s. How do we enforce it otherwise? I might cold-blooded, ain't she, Donald? Done. Use this. Signal's locked to Birdie's tracker. Should lead you right to him. Or his body. Whatever you find. Bring him back to us, okay? The guy calls himself the information broker. Like he's starring one of those fancy broadcast productions the station puts out. My guess is, he brokers information. Don! I don't care if the guy's name is the architect himself, so long as we get paid well and paid on time. No dispute here. Watch where you're stepping, stranger. You lose a leg, I gotta file the incident report. Got a problem? Maybe I can help.
They can't keep us out.
I shipped with a merc who had a gun like yours, Nyoka. He polished it, sang to it, slept with it. Not like that, as far as I know. Sounds like he had himself a discerning palate. Where are you going with this? He couldn't hit the broadside of an assault cruiser, hence the tin shredder. Wouldn't be the first man I met bearing compensation for his lack of skill. If I never smell another raft, it'll be too soon. Weren't you a sawbones? Figured you ought to have smelled. Worse. Sure, but those things reek like bad cologne. It's different. I'm with you there. At least humans have the courtesy to wait a while before their bodies start to stink. Most of them. Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. We're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. That's a nice way to think about it. Graham would be our father. I suppose Zora might make a good mother if the two of them could stop arguing. You can think of those two as our leaders, but they're more like examples. We all ought to be more like them. Why, he's our founder! Graham taught us about philosophism. Through him, we came to the eternal truth. I'm glad you're asking, by the way. I hope you'll consider staying. She, well, she's been with us since the beginning. 
I think she was our sawbones back then, but now she's more like our commander. She goes and finds people in the wilderness and gets them to come here. And she keeps us from being chewed on and whatnot. She's liable to take your head off if you screw up, but then she'll sew it back on for you. Graham's place is in the large building straight back. Thor is sometimes there talking with him, but usually she's in the triage clinic next door. Oh, Graham settled here a long time ago. Shoot, I wish I had a pamphlet to give you. It's all in there. I wasn't around back then, but they say a lot of the old MSI corporate folks died here. He calls it a spiritual metaphor, something about rising from the ashes. I ought to mention, the Iconoclasts are loyal folk. Treat them right, they'll do the same. Turn on them, they'll open fire without a second thought. Carry on. A Manta Queen. Yeah. We felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. Nice day, huh? A monarch, anyway. A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. Shed the trappings of a materialistic life, Captain. You'll find your soul much less burdened. Also, we're broke. Yes. If we were meant to enjoy the things that glitter and shine, the universe would provide them. Most of Halcyon isn't up Sulphur Creek. I'd wager the opposite. The corporations are doomed. Only we have the truth at our backs, and we are better for it. Now, why have you come? The Iconoclasts are free folk. We live under our rules, motivated by our own beliefs, all petals on the same flower of enlightenment. Meanwhile, the board strangles the will of its workers. It is the penultimate exercise of a poisoned society where people are enslaved by a corporate ladder. We seek to replace their way of life with ours. Philosophism is the key to unlocking their shackles. This is not anarchy. Society requires structure, Captain. It is just that the board's structure is killing the colony. Ours will not. All right. I'm sorry. As long as it's been, I'd still rather not speak of it. That was a painful day for us all. All people are part of the Philosophist family. I've come to accept that, along with the additional weight of their deaths. Awakening is available to all whose minds are ready to accept it. What would you like to know? Not in the sense of a single entity, fashioning the universe as a whittler fashions a flute. The universe came into being over time, organically, naturally, and without purpose. In that sense, I suppose you could say that, in the interest of finding its purpose, the universe itself created all living things. Questions like these are distractions. It doesn't matter whether an entity sparked the universe or not. Only by pursuing the eternal truth will we find these and other answers. 
the point of no return. When your mind fully opens to the eternal truth, every philosophist experiences it along the path to enlightenment. For many, it is the first brush with the cold of death when they realize that all of their lives have boiled down into the single truth of that moment. Mine was witnessing my friend and colleague transform into the very evil we sought to combat. Now he runs MSI just like the overlords before him. Sanjar Nandi, he leads MSI out of Stellar Bay. Such a shame, the way his sensibilities have been corrupted over time. Ah, the Eternal. We are all part of the consciousness of the cosmos. Each of us plays a tiny role in the universe's continual journey toward understanding itself. You and I, and the rats and the mantis swarms, divinity is in us all, and the Eternal is that divinity. Everyone regardless of ability to believe, is another facet of the universe contemplating its own existence. All right. Why have you come? Stop. No. Spreading the truth is the only way to combat the board's poisonous campaign of propaganda against their people. I realize the board has blockaded our efforts, but Devil's Peak is an interplanetary radio tower. Surely somebody is listening. Surely? Graham, we should be focusing on survival anyway. Food, ammo, and medicine. Maybe now is the time to pivot. Pivot, huh? If radio isn't working, we might try another way. It seems the captain's timing is more than just serendipitous. It must be fate. I've had my sights on an old printing press for some time. The board uses magazines and advertisements to subtly focus the colony's attention. We will use their tricks against them. Wait, that's not what I meant. Help me clear out and repair the press, and I will have no need for that rust bucket of a radio tower. might actually have better reach. People read that stuff all over the system, even in Byzantium. You see, citizens of Halcyon are glued to their periodicals. Even I find myself occasionally distracted by their positively shameful quality of editing and unacceptable disregard for grammatical structure. My literary prowess will hook them and the eternal truth will reel them in. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm starting to sound like one of Sanjar's fishermen. I may have worked in the presses once, but the bitterness of being slave to their abhorrent rules has long since vanished. All right, almost vanished. Can you believe they don't put a comma after the final item in a series? Bastards. Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought... rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... Wait, where is Huxley? It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. One of our sympathizers. A woman named Carlotta periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. 
Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage. Hey, I know you. Boss says you've been real helpful, like. But, uh, we got this handled. We appreciate, but do not require your assistance. That's my nice way of telling you to saw it off. We're fixing a leaky generator. What's it to you? What are you, a safety inspector? It's busted. Pumping out gas. It ain't safe. Oh, whoops. I'll get right on that, boss. Hope this ain't in my performance review. <sighs> I don't know what your angle is, but... All right. Be sure to tell her how hard it was to fix the generator. You know, after you're done fixing it. I don't know how you got those goons to leave, but thank you. Graham ordered rollers and what's-its, right? For a printing press? Here, take them. Like I said, this is my last run.
law help them? I don't know. Maybe Sublight can lend a hand. I should go. Look, Graham's got a bit or two left in his account. I can send one last dropout before I wash my hands of this. What do you want delivered? I always took that woman for the sensible type. Good on her. I'll send some along. Give them all my regards. And good luck out there. Don't go getting eaten. Go on. I need to get moving. I'm telling you, the Van Noys are fine.
bullshit, Graham. They don't just abandon orders, and they weren't at the ruins. Where in this sulfur-sodden hellhole did you send them? They're on a very important... Ah, we'll continue this later. Welcome back, Captain. They're hunters. Badass ones at that. Hope they're all right. They're our best unit, and now they're missing in action. And we'll continue that discussion later. Thank the Eternal that someone's got some sense in their head. Carlotta usually schedules the next drop during the meeting. When's she coming? That is most unfortunate. This cuts off one of our only two supply lines on Monarch. Sanja, our old friend, you're about to cross a dangerous line. About to? That idiot just declared war. I... we will deal with his subversion later. For now, we must redouble our efforts to spread the truth to the colony. I've already sent a team ahead to scout the press, one of our best. Meet them there and find out if they've been successful. You sent the Van Oys there, didn't you? Oh, for fuck's sake, Graham! We needed them in the ruins! Our people died out there! They went willing to fight for our cause. We need reinforcements, we need new recruits. The Van Noys saw the printing facility with the same importance as I. You're lucky they don't have airlocks on Monarch or someone would have helped you into one by now. I have the utmost confidence in their abilities. Friends, we must have faith that the men and women we recruit can handle the duties for which we recruit them. Yes, you're damn right he could have, but he's so obsessed with preaching that he's become blind to our actual problems. Look, just... if the Van Noys are still alive... Get them out of there. With Sanjar pressing the issue like this, I have a feeling we'll need them. Used to be, you can get the best wine on Monarch here.
Getting my target practice in today. Here we go. Got him! Nice, Captain! Captain. 